Chris has decided. One and done. That's there's, it. There's just one. He has those big tall ones with the arms. That's <laughs> all he cares about. We're Chris and Melissa, pursuing our best life in midlife by living in 12 cities in 12 months. Right now we're in Phoenix, Arizona, in the desert. We don't know much about desert life, so we're exploring a place that promises to teach us a lot. It's Sunday morning, 8 a.m., and we are headed to the Desert Botanical Garden in Phoenix. Yeah, there are botanical gardens in the desert, believe it or not. It's supposed to be gorgeous. I've heard about it from a few different people, and so I thought we should go, and Chris agreed. Yeah, hey, did you know that the botanical garden was started by somebody from Sweden? I did not know that. You did some research? Is that crazy? In the desert. Like, there's no desert in Sweden. I don't, at least I don't think there is. Is there? Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. He loved it so much, he said, we got to save the desert. Oh, that's awesome. So now we're going to go check it out. Cool. I wonder what else we'll learn while we're there. A lot about cactus. Cacti? Cactus? No, I'm just going to learn about one cactus. <laughs> Chris has decided. One and done. That's it. There's just one. It's those big tall ones with the arms. That's <laughs> all he cares about. We're going to a garden. I would have never thought 30 years ago I'd be saying that on a Sunday morning at 8 a.m. The Desert Botanical Garden is located inside of Papago Park, which is on the east side of Phoenix. So in all of our travels, are we going to go to every botanical garden we come across? Is that a new thing for the channel? I don't know. I think they're beautiful and fun and it's nice to learn more about different plants. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and then you'll see if we actually do go to botanical gardens all the time. Yeah, or comment below and recommend different botanical gardens across the country we should visit. Yeah, that'd be cool. Melissa and I are wondering if that's really art or if it's a plant. What is it? A Chihuly glass sculpture. No. monarch butterflies are coming through here so we might actually see a bunch of monarch butterflies oh wonderful yeah we see those up in minnesota so they come on down all the way from minnesota just like a lot of the snowbirds from minnesota <laughs> but they do look at this it's a desert rose from southern africa so beautiful don't touch those would not mess with that cactus. Um, what do we do? I think we just go. It's just go this way? Yeah, let's go that okay. way. We actually spent a couple hours at this place. It was pretty interesting. There's 55 cultivated acres filled with thousands of species of cactus, trees, and flowers here. Did you know that more than 2,000 species of cactus exist in the world? That's pretty amazing. I'm wondering what happened to the pricklies on these guys. Cacti are weird. Have you ever seen a plant that's like has black leaves? I don't think so. That is really cool. It's gorgeous. And then it's kind of twisted, right? Well, that cactus is kind of twisted. Oh, look, a flower. Is that the desert miracle? Don't these kind of look like they're from prehistoric times? Oh. It, it, it looks like a plant from like, like dinosaurs would have eaten. It's huge. are the things you always see when you hear about Arizona and I always thought it would be like soft to the touch but it feels like a treat really oh yeah you should try it you're not gonna damage it these cactus look like they go through a lot of tough stuff to survive well living in a desert would be hard but they always look like they've been beat up by animals and I don't know 
sword wielding crazy people, but. <laughs> because we've seen so many sword wielding crazy people during our time in Arizona. I watched a movie last night. You should try it. Touch it. No. That was the cutest cactus you ever seen. Okay, another thing I wonder is why does that one not have arms? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'll sit on the bench for a moment. I'm <gasps> starting to break you around. Let's do it. It's such a beautiful morning. It that's is why, a gorgeous morning. That's why you sit on a bench. <laughs> there was nothing illegal about what they did. Plants grow by the inch and die by the foot. <sighs> I, I, I made sure that there was no plant when I put my foot down there. <laughs> and if I wouldn't have put my foot down there, I would have fallen on the plant and would have killed lots of them. Or you could have just stayed back and been respectful. That was an option too. You know what? I have a job to do. Chris, did you see the ball in the center over there? Yes, I am now seeing it. You think that is? I think it's art. We need to investigate. So, you can't walk out there. Well, we can't walk out there, but hopefully when we walk around, we'll see it. Okay. Okay, Melissa, I want you to do a cactus impression, okay? <laughs> you look like a referee. <laughs> Touchdown! Maybe cacti would make great referees. Okay. I'm ready. Does it kind of look good? Yeah! I've practiced doing cacti impressions a lot. So if you were an octopus, you could do that one. <laughs> I am learning why the saguaro cactus has ribs. The ribs allow it to expand and contract depending upon how much moisture it's holding. And then the ability to store water is an adaptation that helps it live in the desert. Another amazing thing I just learned is that the cactus will uh, grow additional roots right after a rainfall. They're called rain roots to capture all that moisture that it needs. That's pretty impressive. And then the roots are like really close to the surface. So, and they spread out wide instead of down deep because the rain comes down and get the rain right away. What a new. Other people. <laughs> I suppose, you know, <laughs> ecologists and botanists. botanists, I suppose they knew, but <laughs> we know now. We get to be amazed. Yeah. And now you guys know. Okay, Melissa, what kind of tree is this? I don't know the official name, but I'm dubbing it the Seussian tree because it really reminds me of Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> Can you do like like a little Seuss rhyme now? No, Make I one just, up. No, I can't. I'm sorry. Look at me. <laughs> I am but a tree. <laughs> and I am green. And really not that mean. See, you're, you've got skills. <laughs> okay, you learned. Yes, it is the Foothill Palo Verde. That's what it is. This is not the Dr. Seussian tree or whatever you called it. I called it the Seussian. The Seussian? What if it changed because of this? Ooh, why did, okay, sorry, but why does it? <laughs> Squirrel! You want to tell us? You tell. Why? Okay, so the Palo Verde, the reason it has green bark is to really survive out in the desert because the chlorophyll is in the green bark and they just get rid of their leaves. Like, I don't need these guys. I got green bark. So that's how they feed themselves. Okay, I was talking about how the, the big cigarro cactus has a lot of issues, like holes and stuff. It's due to woodpeckers. The woodpeckers make the holes and then they say, hey, time to move away, time to go north, you know, peck some different trees. And then owls move in and other animals, birds. Man, we are learning a lot. We are. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm getting somewhat smarter. Thank goodness we're recording so we retain this knowledge. Yeah, I, I'll forget in about an hour. Oh, there's a butterfly though. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming this way. 
here's what I think is going on with this. I read that they're going to be doing a Chihuly Glass in the Desert exhibition. I might have the name a little wrong. So what we're thinking is this is an incomplete work of art right now that they're going to be attaching the glass and all of that that goes there. Yeah, so if somebody knows, comment below. Or if someone comes here later after this video posts and they, you know, see Chihuly things all around it, let us know. We'd like to know what it ends up looking like. That is the most interesting cactus we've seen. Melissa said it looks like it has a brain. Those are prickly pear. We have one at home we have to try. I bought it at the farmer's market yesterday. Are they sweet? I think they're kind of sweet. We're gonna have to try the one we have at home. If it came from the desert, I bet you it's gonna be spicy hot. <laughs> Cause, right? I, don't, I don't know if I follow the logic. <laughs> yeah, everything found in the desert is going to be spicy hot. Um, how many nights will you be staying, sir? Uh, just one. I got to get some fruit. Welcome to the Ramada. Ramadas are temporary shelters used for the harvesting of saguaro trees. And now I totally get why Ramada is the name of a hotel chain. It's a temporary stay. We are learning so much. Dang. It's amazing. I love this. Okay, so that was an oasis, although I think it's artificially created. But they say oasis used to be pretty prevalent in the desert, but not anymore due to the increased use of water by humans. We saw dwellings that you'd see in an Akamel Odom village. It was super interesting. The housing dwellings consisted of three different structures. One would be the kitchen, another would be for sleeping and living, and then another for outdoor activities. The outdoor activities one was called the Ramada. Pronunciation correction. <laughs> we have now seen how to properly enunciate the cacti that are so popular and prevalent around here. It's Suwaro. Suwaro. All right, so our time is up at the Botanical Garden. I have to say, I had a lot more fun than I would have thought I was going to have. Yes, I loved it. I thought I was going to love it, and I did. We had a ton of fun here at the Botanical Garden in Phoenix. You got to go. Yes, and we are exploring so many different things. Be sure to check them out right over here. Subscribe to keep up with all the things that we're doing, because we're doing a lot. Yes, you'll want those notifications. Mm-hmm.